Hello, and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm going to talk about the 9-11 attacks, collapse of the World Trade Center. Alright, let's begin. The collapse of the World Trade Center occurred during the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, after the Twin Towers were struck by two hijacked commercial airliners. One World Trade Center, WTC-1, or the North Tower, was hit at 8.46 a.m. Eastern Time and collapsed at 10.28 a.m. Two World Trade Center, WTC-2, or the South Tower, was hit at 9.03 a.m. and collapsed at 9.59 a.m. The resulting debris severely damaged or destroyed more than a dozen other adjacent and nearby structures, ultimately leading to the collapse of 7 World Trade Center at 5.21 p.m. A total of 2,763 people were killed in the crashes, fires, and subsequent collapses, including 2,192 civilians, 343 firefighters, and 71 law enforcement officers as well as all the passengers and crew on the airplanes airplanes, which included 147 civilians and the 10 hijackers. In September 2005, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, published the results of its investigation into the collapse. The investigators did not find anything substandard in the design of the Twin Towers, noting that the severity of the attacks was beyond anything experienced in buildings in the past. They determined the fires to be the main cause of the collapses, finding that sagging floors pulled inward on the perimeter columns, causing them to bow and then buckle. Once the upper section of the building began to move downwards, a total progressive collapse was unavoidable. The cleanup of the World Trade Center site involved round-the-clock operations and cost hundreds of millions of dollars. Some surrounding structures that were not hit by the airplanes still sustained significant damage, requiring them to be torn down. Demolition of the surrounding damaged buildings continued even as new construction proceeded on the Twin Towers replacement, the new One World Trade Center, which was opened in November 2014. Now let's talk about the investigation of the 9-11 attacks. In the immediate aftermath of the attacks, numerous structural engineers and experts spoke to the media, describing what they thought caused the towers to collapse. Abel Hassan Astana ASL a structural engineering professor at the University of California at Berkeley explained that the high temperatures in the fires weakened the steel beams and columns, causing them to become soft and mushy, and eventually they were unable to support the structure above. Astan ASL also suggested that the fireproofing became dislodged during the initial aircraft impacts. He also explained that, once the initial structural failure occurred, progressive collapse of the entire structure was inevitable. 63. Cesar Pelli who designed the Petronas Towers in Malaysia and the World Financial Center in New York, remarked, no building is prepared for this kind of stress. On September 13, 2001, Zdenek P. Bazant, professor of civil engineering and materials science at Northwestern University, circulated a draft paper with results of a simple analysis of the World Trade Center collapse. Bazant suggested that heat from the fires was a key factor, causing steel columns in both the core and the perimeter to weaken and experience deformation before losing their carrying capacity and buckling. Once more than half of the columns on a particular floor buckled, the overhead structure could no longer be supported and complete collapse of the structures occurred. Bazant later published an expanded version of this analysis. 65. Other analyses were conducted by MIT civil engineers Oral Bayukasturk and Franz Josephom, who also described a collapse mechanism on September 21, 2001, 66. They later contributed to an MIT collection of papers on the WTC collapses edited by Eduardo Kausel called The Towers Lost and Beyond. Immediately following the collapses, there was some confusion about who had the authority to carry out an official investigation. While there are clear procedures for the investigation of aircraft accidents, no agency had been appointed in advance to investigate building collapses. 68. A team was quickly assembled by the Structural Engineers Institute of the American Society of Civil Engineers, led by W. Gene Corley, Senior Vice President of CTL Group. It also involved the American Institute of Steel Construction, the American Concrete Institute, the National Fire Protection Association, and the Society of Fire Protection Engineers. 69. ASC ultimately invited FEMA to join the investigation, which was completed under the auspices of the latter. The investigation was criticized by some engineers and lawmakers in the U.S. It had little funding, no authority to demand evidence, and limited access to the WTC site. 
One major point of contention at the time was that the cleanup of the WTC site was resulting in the destruction of the majority of the building's steel components. 70 Indeed, when NIST published its final report, it noted the scarcity of physical evidence that it had had at its disposal to investigate the collapses. Only a fraction of a percent of the buildings remained for analysis after the cleanup was completed, some 236 individual pieces of steel, although 95% of structural beams and plates and 50% of the reinforcement bars were recovered. FEMA published its report in May 2002. While NIST had already announced its intention to investigate the collapses in August of the same year, by September 11, 2002, a year after the disaster, there was growing public pressure for a more thorough investigation. 72. Congress passed the National Construction Safety Team Bill in October 2002, giving NIST the authority to conduct an investigation of the World Trade Center collapses. FEMA Building Performance Study FEMA suggested that fires in conjunction with damage resulting from the aircraft impacts were the key to the collapse of the towers. Thomas Eager, professor of materials engineering and engineering systems at MIT, described the fires as the most misunderstood part of the WTC collapse. This is because the fires were originally said to have melted the floors and columns. 74. Jet fuel is essentially kerosene and would have served mainly to ignite very large, but not unusually hot, hydrocarbon fires. 75. As Eager said, the temperature of the fire at the WTC was not unusual, and it was most definitely not capable of melting steel. 76. This led Eager, FEMA and others to focus on what appeared to be the weakest point of the structures, namely, the points at which the floors were attached to the building frame.